everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do a bit of a TBR update. So if you've seen my reading goals video for 2021, one of my reading goals was to buy less books and decrease my fiscal TBR. It's a classic one of a, any booktuber really, but I think especially when you've been on booktube for a while, um, you tend to find, I think, that, or it's very common anyway, that, that uh, over the first few years of joining booktube you tend to buy a lot more books than you might have prior. And so that is one of my reading goals, uh, or one of my related uh, goals of this year. Uh, and so I thought that it was time to do my first check-in with that goal. Um, I'm thinking of doing quarterly check-ins, so this is the first quarter, obviously. And let's put it like this, there has not been any decreasing, but I have read my TBR books and I've bought TBR books. So I've managed to stay completely or almost completely in balance with, um, with my books, uh, with my total amount of books. I think exactly actually, uh, because I've been reading my own books and I've been acquiring new books uh, about the same pace. Um, so that even though that doesn't seem like that is uh, a success, it is progress for me because it's been a long time since my numbers were stagnant, uh, that it was stable. Uh, usually I tend to increase slightly, even if I've slowed down on my book buying, it's still been a slow increase. And often it's because I read library books I prioritize them over my own books, which doesn't make sense if you're getting a lot of new things as well. So that is something I've been very mindful with this year, and so I'm happy the fact that, that I've managed to be to be at the same point, uh, even though there's been a lot of uh, shift in the books I actually do have. So I thought today that I would talk about the books that I've read from my TBR, just mention them briefly, and then do a book haul. Because of course I haven't done a book haul this year yet, and I have, as I said, been buying books. Uh, most of them are translated uh, literature because it's been a lot on my mind, and there's a few new releases and a few other ones that I've got specifically for Invisible Cities Reading Project. I've also got a few exceptions to that doesn't really fit into anything, anything of that. Um, so yeah, let's just get on with this ramble, that's going to take a while. So I have uh, unhauled a few books as well, I will not go through them because first of all I don't really enjoy the unhaul, unhaul um, type of videos, uh, it's just not something I uh, find interesting and usually it's because for me it's a very sort of, I don't really put that much thought into it. If the, if the if I've come across a book on my shelves that I'm no longer interested in, for whatever reason, I just get rid of it and then I forget about it. As uh, so I haven't really made notes of what I've gotten rid of, I just donate books whenever I'm not interested in reading them anymore. Like with my DNFs, I tend to just put them aside and forget about them and move on. So these are all of the TBR books that I have um, that I've owned prior to this year and read this year um, and a lot of them you've already seen in my January and February wrap-ups and um, these these two I will talk about in my March wrap-up this one as well and then uh, I've also read and uh, I've also bought a book that I've already read and that is Empty Houses by Brenda Navarro which I will also talk about in my March wrap up as well as House Guest by Ampero Davila um, and both of these are Mexican authors and that's the reason I've been reading, bu buying them in March and also reading them in March uh, which has been really nice to just being able to buy a book and immediately jumping into it when it arrives in the post. Now let's get on to the book haul section of this video. So first I'll talk about the few that hasn't arrived yet. So we have uh, Katie Briggs' This Little Art, which is a Fitzgeraldo edition book. Uh, you will notice that I have a lot of Fitzgeraldos in this book haul because I've been obsessing over them uh, in, in this year specifically. Um, and I've been really interested in them for a long time, but this year I've just sort of allowed myself to be um, crushing on them. And this particular book is a non-fiction book about translation. It's coming from uh, a translator's point of view and what her 
what her job is like and sort of her philosophy or sort of her approach to translation and some general things and I thought it was um, it's one of those books I've been wanting to read for a long time but especially because I've been reading a lot of books for Invisible Cities and it's something that has become such a big part of my reading this year so far um, I thought it would be a fantastic book to have uh, on the side um, next to all of the translated literature reading I do Another book that I've just ordered is The World of the Speechless by Julio Roman Ribeiro, I think. Um, and this is a Peruvian author I have uh, ordered specifically because Peru is coming up in April for Invisible Cities. Uh, and this is a short story collection. I specifically got this because of this author being mentioned in one of the other books that I will show you. Um, so I'm intrigued and um, I'm, I've been really enjoying reading short stories as well lately. Next we have Catalan Street by Magda Zabo, translated by Len Rex. I got this one as well as uh, Isis Ballad, which hasn't arrived yet, um, right after finishing Abigail by this author, uh, which I absolutely loved and I would like to get my holds on uh, get my hands on uh, the door in physical copy as well because they listened to that as an audiobook prior. Um, don't have any idea about the uh, plot of this one, I just love Sabo as a writer. Next, I finally picked up Disoriental by uh, Nigal Javadi, translated from the French by Tina Cover. Uh, and this is a Persian author, Iranian author, uh, living in France at the moment. And uh, I think it's partly about the main character's relationship with her father, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I heard um, at the heart of the sweeping saga of 20th century Iran is the story of Kimia Sadr, punk rock aficionado, storyteller extraordinaire, a modern servicesad divided between family traditions and her disorientalization. Um, I have been, uh, for the last year or so, I've been looking for any Iranian authors, especially in translation, um, and even more so female writers, or women writers, and um, and this one I've heard amazing things from a lot of people, especially Michael from Knowledge Lost, uh, has made me feel like I absolutely need to read this. In January I read uh, Kokoro by Natsume Soseki, I actually reread that, and then I decided to pick up I Am a Cat by Natsume Soseki, uh, translated by uh, Aiko Ito and Graham Wilson. Uh, this is obviously a much longer book, it is a serialization of a book told from a cat's perspective, I think. Um, I've been wanting to read more Soseki, but uh, ever since rereading Kokoro and getting so much more out of it the second time, uh, I wanted to dive deeper into his uh, bibliography. And a cat's perspective is definitely something that appeals to me. Next up, we have a Thai author that is Arid Dreams by Duanwad Pimwana, translated by Mui Pupukaksel. Uh, this is a Tilted Axis book. I decided to order this one immediately after reading Tokyo Uno Station by Yumiri in January, uh, which was my first uh, acquaintance with Tilted Axis as a publisher. Um, and I really wanted to discover more of their catalog. This is a short story collection uh, translated by, from the Thai. I've been watching a lot of Thai uh, television or uh, series lately and listening to Thai music. Uh, and so I wanted to explore more of the literature. There's not a a lot of it in translation into English, uh, but this one was one of the uh, this was one of the authors that came up. Next, we have a few nonfiction books that I've got my my hands on. This is *The Impossible State: North Korea, Past and Future* by Victor Cha. Uh, I mentioned this one in the May announcement for *Invisible Cities* because we're reading North Korea in May, and I am excited, so excited about that because I've been wanting to read more about North Korea, especially. Uh, I'm planning to read uh, the Bundy short story collection as well um, for sure and this is one of the ones that I mentioned in that video uh, and that I can't get hold of through my library so I decided to just take the plunge finally to buy it. I'm hoping that this is going to be the historical sort of overview 
of uh, this country that I'm looking for. Next up we have Afropean Notes from Black Europe by Jenny Pitts. This is a book I heard about through Mel from Mel's Book Adventures. She's been talking about the Jacal Prize recently as well as last year and this was the winner of the prize last year um, and I've been really wanting to read it for a while but I was reminded that I wanted to read it when she talked about this year's long list. Uh, so finally got it. It is a book all about race and racism in Europe and I think it's going to be uh, excellent. I've, I definitely trust Mel's recommendations so um, I think um, it will be a perspective that is much needed for any sort of race related nonfiction. Next up we have a book I've shown on my Instagram recently and that is Walking Through Fire. The Later Years of Noel El Sadawi in Her Own Words and this is an autobiography of the author who uh, passed away uh, this past Sunday uh, and um, I know a lot of a lot of us read A Woman at Point Zero in February for Egypt for Invisible Cities um, and as soon as I had finished that I had ordered this one. This is the second part in her autobiography talking specifically about her work as a doctor, as an activist, uh, as a um, writer. One of the things that drew me to this second volume rather than the first of the autobiography is that it's focusing in on her uh, later part of her life and when she has more sort of settled beliefs and uh, opinions on things. Uh, so I thought it would give an interesting perspective to her um, fiction work as well. Um, I have just barely started this one uh, and I think she's a really good writer so I'm excited to explore more of her uh, body of work. Next up we have a book that I'm currently reading and I'm actually about halfway through and that is Not To Read by Alejandro Sambra. This is translated by Maggie McDowell, of course. This is an essay collection where he talks about uh, books and reading life and it's kind of a mix of uh, criticism as well as just personal anecdotes and uh, observations about reading, uh, reading and books. Uh, and I'm loving the sense of humor and snark in this in this collection. I have two more of Stralo. I said I had a lot of them, and I do. Uh, this one is In the Dark Room by Brian Dillon, and I think this is an Irish author, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a nonfiction book and. And the reason I decided to pick this one up is because I would just mean Alexa, I've mentioned her before, she is probably my favorite bookstagrammer um, and she has such a fantastic, fantastic taste and her book reviews are always so poignant and well articulated and uh, always makes me want to read something um, that she writes about. Uh, she specifically recommended this book to me based on uh, the themes of memory and sort of uh, physical objects and how they um, carry memories that we have uh, and family, sort of family uh, story as well. Uh, and I've just read a little bit of this as well, uh, put it to the side because of, I'm reading so many Invisible Cities books that are sort of um, that feels very time uh, sensitive <laughs> because I tried to keep up with the month's reading um, even though that doesn't always pan out um, but I really enjoyed what I've read of it so far and pretty much been annotating every page so I'm so happy she decided to recommend this one to me um, and I mean I trust her judgment anyway uh, but it was nice to have a personal recommendation from her I will link her um, bookstagram account below as well. Uh, so there's that for though, and then we also have this one which was another recommendation from her and also it was one of my most anticipated books of the winter season for translated books that I mentioned in my anticipated releases upcoming thing uh, video that I made in January I think or even December uh, and that is In Memory of Memory by Maria Stepanova and this is translated by Sasha Dugdale and this is another book obviously about memories and I think this is focusing it's another nonfiction um, as you can tell by the white cover, I should have <laughs> mentioned that. If you don't know, Visceraldo has uh, white covers for all of their nonfiction titles and blue for all of their fiction titles. Um, but this one is another uh, nonfiction memoir kind of thing about memory. And I think it's about the author finding this box of things uh, after her grandmother passes away or something along those lines and she goes through her objects and sort of dives into the memories of 
uh, her um, her family and her grandmother specifically, if I'm remembering correctly, the death of her aunt. And finally, of all of these books I have, is another book I mentioned in that anticipated releases for the winter 2021 season that came out in March, and that is an I novel uh, by Minae Mizumura, translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter. This author uh, is the one who wrote The Fall of Language and The Age of English, which I loved. Uh, it's a nonfiction book talking about the Japanese language and the effects of English as a global language on smaller languages uh, or any other national language, really. Um, and it's a fantastic book. This book is sort of a combination of both a translator I love and trust, uh, especially both for her work in translated The Fall of the Language and The Age of English, as well as translating The Great Passage I read in January. And as I said, I really enjoyed the other book by Minae Mizumura. This one seems to tackle the same themes of language and of identity in connection with language and uh, all of those things, but in a fiction book. Um, and I'm just so excited. I've been waiting for this one since probably October at least. So those are all of the TBR books I've read and the new TBR books I've added. Uh, in the last few months I started the year off with 451 books and at the moment I have 451 books. So let's see if the second quarter is actually showing any decrease or if I'm just going to continue on with keeping this balance which wouldn't be the worst thing ever but it it would eventually mean that I have no space left uh, and that's still a problem so um, hopefully I can sort of have this as a half success I think uh, because it's still better than actually increasing the amount which I did all through last year um, even when I bought less books I still what was uh, increasing because I wasn't reading my own books um, and this year I sort of tried to find a balance of reading my own and reading some library books and, and stuff like that uh, so I'm not gonna make any more excuses uh, but I, I'm really happy with just being stable at the moment and hopefully in the next quarter show you some real progress uh, so that was all I wanted to say I would love to hear if you are doing a TBR reading goal how that is going so far this year um, if you have read any of the books that I mentioned or if you are interested in reading any of them I would love to talk about that in the comments I hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you soon bye